guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you a brief wrap-up of what I've read so far in July. I've read four books this month, and I've enjoyed all of them in different ways, so let's just get right into it. The first book I finished in July was The Magician's Book, A Skeptic's Adventures in Narnia by Laura Miller. And honestly, y'all, this is like one of my favorite books of the year so far. It was amazingly good. It, this is a literary criticism of The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis, and it's also partially a memoir about Laura's experiences reading The Chronicles, and then it also discusses um, the biography of C.S. Lewis and, you know, things that impacted his writing, um, The Chronicles of Narnia, and etc. And it was just a really fascinating book. Laura goes through many of the different elements that you see in The Chronicles and explains how those um, features came to be included and how various things in C.S. Lewis's life led to this um, mentions and for example she talks about like why Lucy is a girl instead of a boy and how it relates to C.S. Lewis's ideas of masculinity and then she talks about like Ireland and how um, C.S. Lewis you know he always wanted to be the most British guy he could be and he's associated with being British nowadays but he was very much Irish at his core and Ireland influences the Chronicles and of course she also talks about like racism and um, Christianity and things like that. Laura Miller is not a Christian so she does not discuss you know the apologetics of the Chronicles but she does explain how like, you know, she doesn't dismiss the elements, and she talks about how they are a big part of the book, and it's just a really fascinating book and a really fascinating read, and like I said, it's been one of my favorite reads of the whole year so far. It's just, just so unexpectedly good, and like, I just really enjoyed it, and I highly recommend it if you're looking for like a, liter a literary criticism that is like insightful, but still very engaging, and you know, just really overall an awesome book. Really, really recommend it. I then finished Death with Interruptions by Jose, Jose Saramago, and this is a book that was translate translated from Portuguese, and this is a book, it's sort of like a two-part book. It's The first part is about how one day a country wakes up, and they never say what country it is, but I think it's supposed to be Spain. But um, a country wakes up, and nobody has died, and it's the January 1st, and nobody dies on January 1st. And then it continues, and for like months and months, nobody ever dies in this country. And so it's discussing like the impact that that would have on like the funeral industry and the Catholic Church and the government and you know nursing homes and all these really interesting you know insights and it also talks about like the concept of euthanasia because this country is the only country that you know nobody dies and so people are taking their very sick loved ones across the border and you know it talks about like the, the ethics of that and whether that's moral when the person wants you to take them across the border. So it's very interesting for that part. And then it shifts to the perspective of death, and it talks about why she decided to stop killing people in this country, and she also, um, it discusses her life, so to speak, and how she's existed all these years, and it also, she decides she wants to become human, and that's sort of why she canceled death. And she it talked about her um, experience as being a human person temporarily. So this was an interesting book. I will say that Jose Saramaga has a very interesting writing style in that he doesn't capitalize, you know, things. And he doesn't use punctuation. So, like, when there's a, a conversation going, a lot of times you can't really understand who says what, and so you have to, like, reread it a few times. And this was an interesting book, but I guess I thought it was going to be more of a novel than it was. It was more like a hypothetical discussion of ethics in a fictional format. So it was okay, but I don't necessarily recommend it. I feel like this is a very particular style, and it's okay, but again, 
I mean, I enjoyed it because it's such a unique book, but I can't say I would recommend it to anybody unless you're particularly interested in, like, the ethics of no one ever dying. I then finished The Summer Queen by Elizabeth Chadwick. This was my workbook for the month, but it's been so busy at work lately, and I've also been working on my financial literacy um, stuff that I haven't really been reading anything at work, and so I just decided I was going to pick this up and finish it at home. And once I decided to do that, I finished about 200 pages of this book in like two days. So it's a really engaging read. Um, this covers Eleanor of Aquitaine's um, young womanhood. So she's, we start when she's 12, and her father has passed away, and she's betrothed to Louis of France, and then we see their marriage, and their divorce, and then she remarries Henry of England to become the King of England at the end of the book. And this is the first in a trilogy, so in the next one she'll be middle-aged, and then in the final one she'll be an older, you know, an older woman. So, this is just a really interesting book. It's really well written and really engaging and like I said I read 200 pages in a very short time frame and I just really enjoyed it and I am really interested in reading both of the sequels and I put them both on my TBR right away once I really got into this book and Eleanor is just a very engaging character and the story is very engaging. Um, during part of the story, they are on a crusade and they are going to Jerusalem. And so you see how that works and you see the impact of that. And they also go to Rome and, you, and all of these places are very beautifully described. Elizabeth Chadwick has an eye for description. And it's just a really wonderful historical fiction book and I'm really glad I picked it up. Um, I heard about this book on um, non fic books, Gemma, although I think her fiction her, uh, her fiction channel is called Whiskey and Woodhouse now, so um, yeah, Gemma is a really great booktuber and she always has some really great recommendations and I'm really glad that I picked this up on her, you know, after she talked about it. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to the next two books in this series. And then finally, earlier today, I finished my Jane Austen mystery for the month. This one is book number seven, Jane and the Ghost of Netley. But, and of course, all of these books are by Stephanie Barron. This was actually a really different kind of um, mystery from all of the other ones. For one thing, we stayed in Southampton. We came to Southampton in the last book. And prior to this, every other book had had, had a different location. And so we're in Southampton again, which means we get to see, like, characters that we saw in the last book, besides Jane's family and stuff. Like, we get to see residents of Southampton. And it's just a really interesting book. Jane is recruited to um, befriend an alleged French um, spy who is living in Southampton in a very nice estate and she also at this estate the Prince of Wales's mistress um, Maria Fitzherbert is staying and both of these women are um, Catholic and so there's a worry about a Catholic um, revolution or like a Catholic Catholic betrayal to Spain, or not Spain, to France, because this is the time of Napoleon. And this is a really fascinating book. It's also a lot more like, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but in a lot of the other books, Jane is like constantly running around, but because this time her mission is to befriend this spy, um, we she stays a lot more in the same place, and she goes over to this lady's house a lot, and the lady lives in a, um, place called Netley Lodge, which is why it's called The Ghost of Netley. But this was actually a really great addition to the series, and it's one of my favorite ones so far, I think. I mean, I definitely felt like it was better written than some of the other ones, and it was just very engaging, and I read this whole book in about two days, so it was a really fast read, really fast paced. You, you know, you wanted to know what happened, and so it was a really great mystery, and the series in general is a really great um, series, and I'm really looking forward to the next one, and yeah, it was just, I was really glad to have something that was a little lighter after the first three, when they were a bit more literary, and, you know, the, it was, it was just a really nice palate cleanser for, you know, the middle of the month. And that's all I've been, re been reading lately. I'm in, I'm in the middle of two other books. Um, I'm going to finish my Disciple Bible Study book tomorrow, which is really exciting. I've been working on it for 
uh, since last September, and then I'm reading um, Chris Hadfield's memoir. So I am making good progress with my um, July TBR. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to all of the books that I mentioned on that, but we'll see. And of course, book two with Don's coming up. And when I'm filming this, it's the 24 and 48 readathon, but I'm not going to participate um, mostly because. I don't have time. I was at work today and tomorrow I'm doing stuff for my family. But next week is Dewey's and I'm really excited about that. And then of course book two is done. So I hope everybody's, I hope everybody's having a great day and you're reading lots of good books and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!